Hello and welcome to this edition of Energy Independence Magazine. I'm Dwight Cromie. Recently, Sean Reynolds sat down and spoke with Robert Frost, the business manager for the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 440. Since 1939, Locals 440 and 477 have helped to build and maintain the electrical infrastructure of Southern California's Riverside and San Bernardino counties. Their mission is to be the collective voice for the many men and women employed in the electrical voice data video industries. Throughout the U.S. and Canada, the IBEW represents over 725,000 hard-working men and women working in a wide variety of fields, including utilities, construction, telecommunications, broadcasting, manufacturing, railroads, and more. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, Sean. Can you give us a little background or history on the IBEW, uh, some of the significant milestones of your organization and, and your local? Well, the IBEW is an international organization. We have over 2,000 locals across the United States and Canada, and we just recently opened up an office in uh, Guam representing the communication workers over there. Um, IBEW 440 here in Riverside County has been here since 1913. That's when we got our first charter. Uh, during the Depression, we were merged with a couple of different locals. And after the Depression was over, uh, we came back out in 1939 as an individual local. Um, back 15 years ago, we had about 300 members. Today, we're just under 1,000. And we're growing. So we're a vital part of the community. Well, we're going to be speaking with Richard Perper of the NJATC training program. Tell us a little bit about that and why it makes a difference to the participating contractors and ultimately their customers. In 1941, they figured out that they needed to create an apprenticeship program. The apprenticeship program took off nationwide and what it does is it puts them through a five-year training program. Uh, during that five years, they are given the basic knowledge from AC theory all the way up to the calculations and how to do computer programming uh, for large power plants, how to run the conduit throughout all those facilities, and then they have OJT time where they work for the contractor during the day and get paid, and then they go to school at night and earn college credits. Now, contractors, they have their own schools. There's other schools. So what separates this program from that? Our training program, through the National Joint Apprenticeship Training uh, Committee, actually goes through every three years and updates our training program, just like the National Electrical Code does. Um, we upgrade that training to meet today's demands. Union members are perceived by many to make more money for what they do as opposed to craft people doing a similar task. Is this true of your members? And how is this competitive with the contractors, with the end user? Our, our members do not make an exorbitant wage. They make a living wage where they're able to support their family. Um, they are a vital part of the community. Our members are the coaches on softball teams. They're coaches of soccer teams. They go to church with everybody else. Um, they participate in the community. Uh, with that wage, they're able to support the community with their benefits because they have health care for their whole family. They're able to not worry about their child going to the doctor. They're able to go to the restaurant and buy a meal. They make a wage that supports their family. They're able to buy a house in the community. They're able to buy a car. Our members don't get rich um, off of working in the industry. Um, they have a good life and they're able to support their families. And for the contractor, what does this mean? For the contractor, it means they're getting a skilled worker. They've gone through the apprenticeship program, um, the journeyman level, they're educated. Um, our contractors don't have to worry when a guy comes out onto the job site. 
he can hand them the prints and the material and they can do a completed project for them. And generally the jobs come in on time and on budget for the customer, which is a key issue for the customers. We have a program that we call Code of Excellence where we guarantee the customer that our gentlemen, our members, will give them eight hours work for eight hours pay. They will show up and they will do a professional job. And that's all we can offer to the customers um, is our skilled craftsmen. Tell me about some of the contractors that you work with and some of the projects that they're doing right now. We have uh, various different projects going on. We're working at the Riverside Community College uh, District. We have three campuses where we're doing student facilities, administration buildings. Uh, we just finished up the Wheelock Gym for the basketball team. Um, great projects, uh, beautifully designed by local architects, and we meet the local hire de demands of what they call a project labor agreement. The project labor agreement guarantees that the job will be done on time. It guarantees local area hire, which is well over 70 percent, which is a key issue because in the past they've built buildings where contractors come in out of San Diego or LA and they would utilize people from those areas and all that money that was earned went back to those areas. It didn't stay in the local community and that's a key issue for us. Um, right now we have 600 electricians working out in the Blythe area working on two large solar projects. One of them is a photovoltaic site which is the panels that you would put on your house. Um, but it's 4,000 acres worth of photovoltaic. Um, that is a very large project and it takes about two and a half years to do a project like that. So there's a lot of people out there um, and it's a great project for our guys. The other project is the Genesis site, which is a geothermal type system where they put a brine through mirrors and heat it up to superheated steam and when it gets to that steam it runs the turbines that will supply the power to the homes. So those are two great projects we have going on right now and we're working on a lot of schools in the area. Um, College of the Desert is doing some expansion we're working on that. So. Now I know the IBW works uh, closely with, the, uh, uh, with NECA, with the National Electrical Contractors Association. Uh, how do you support each other and, and why is that relationship there? Well, they're a key partner of ours because they employ our members. Uh, we have other contractors that um, participate with them as well that may not be members, but they utilize our programs. NECA is important to us because they're the ones that bid the job. They put everything at risk. Um, they hire our people to get the job done on a timely manner. And if they're not making a profit, our guys aren't working. So our guys do go out and they perform for them. So. Now we've interviewed several guests recently, uh, like Paul Gradillo of the Inland Empire Economic Partnership and John Harrison, the former mayor of Redlands. And they stress the importance of sustainable, econo uh, sustainable economy and relying on green energy, which you were just talking about. How do you see the role of the IBEW competing in this area? And with funding from programs like HERO, we see a lot of PV panels going up on rooftops. Yeah. Why is it important that the IBEW be involved in that? Well, it's, it's all an electrical generating device. Um, dealing with that, the solar power um, helps us become a little less dependent on fossil fuels. Um, it helps the community. Uh, it puts our contractors to work and our members. We have a couple of different programs at our training center. One of them is the electrical vehicle uh, installation program where we certify our members to be installers. So when they go into a house, they know exactly what they're doing. They look at the panel, they determine whether or not the panel can handle the electric charger that the owner just bought uh, for their car. Um, and we are also training them to do facilities for like UPS or FedEx, large corporate projects where they have to have fast chargers for their trucks. So when their trucks come in, they get charged. 
um, during the time period that they're being reloaded and then they can go back out into the community um, taking a lot of the smog out of the air for us. Um, we have the California Advanced Lighting Technology where we are certifying our members to go into a building like this and they would look at all the lights. Uh, they would do an energy audit and with that energy audit, they could tell you as the customer, this is what you could do to make your building more efficient. And then they give you a cafeteria plan to make it more efficient. Then after you get that stuff done, then you can have the solar designed to take your building to a net zero. What specifically is the advantage of having a trained union electrician put these things, install these things? The difference is, is they've been educated on the hazards and what to do with these panels. When they come onto a site, they have done the evaluation of what you need as a customer. Um, would you want to put a person on your roof installing solar panels for your home that just went through a 40-hour class? It's a two-week training for a NAVSEP certification. We have training centers throughout the uh, area that are doing that type of training. Our people have gone through a five-year training on all the different issues for proper installation, the safety requirements, and making sure that your system is properly grounded to where there is not a hazard to you, your pets, your kids, or anybody in the house. They make sure that it is installed safely, properly, because they are generating a high voltage. They generate a large DC voltage to an inverter. That inverter ties into your house. Would you want that installed by somebody who did a two-week training? Do you see the future of NECA and IBW on the rise? And how do you see the emerging workforce of America and the landscape of the American worker? Well, the IBEW and our contractors are the working class of America. We are the ones building America. We reach out to our veterans. We have a program called Helmets to Hard Hats. Through that Helmets to Hard Hats program, anybody who comes in with a DD-214 that shows that they served in the military gets direct interview into the apprenticeship programs, not only with the IBEW, but with the building trades as a whole. And we take pride in that. Matter of fact, the last couple of years, our top graduates have been through that program, the Helmets to Hard Hats. And we are the ones out there building uh, your schools, building your offices, and we are a vital part of the community. And we want to see a strong America. We are the workforce, and we want to help our veterans as much as possible. Well, thank you for joining us today, Bob. All right, thank you. The IBEW Locals 477 and 440 are founding partners of the Inland Empire Labor Management Cooperation Committee, alongside the National Electrical Contractors Association, Southern Sierra's chapter. In the coming decades, the Inland Southern California region expects to see steady growth in a changing economic and technological environment. This will require a qualified technical workforce capable of maintaining complex infrastructures as well as developing strategies to adapt to a new energy efficient systems and hardware. The IBEW along with NECA and organizations like the LMCC are constantly striving to meet the demands of a rapidly changing environment. The future of the country's energy independence and economic strength will require the skill, knowledge and focus of the men and women of the IBEW. To those ends, we wish Robert Frost and all the men and women of Locals 440 and 477 the best of luck. I'm Dwight Cromie, and I want to thank you for watching this edition of Energy Independence Magazine.